Aloha family, Spencer Mac here. Another beautiful day. You know the goal of this channel is to get as high as humanly possible without bringing harm to anyone in a sustainable, non-destructive manner for the good of all. With that being said, an element of getting very high is taking good care of your body, helping clean your body, learning how to regenerate. And uh, I see a lot of people tripping on this sugar diet these days. And it just so happens I am surrounded by sugar. I grow it for a living. Have a good time doing it. And when I saw the sugar cane diet at first, I totally ignored it and thought it was ridiculous. And after it kept showing up and I saw different people talking about it, I was like, okay, what's going on here? So I started to dive into the mechanisms of it. And actually the science behind it, at least the theory is actually pretty interesting. Just as you can get into a particular state focusing solely on fats you can enter into a particular state of metabolism if you focus solely on sugars devoid of proteins some people say fat has to be gone to there's a little bit of a debate about that there's not a lot of human research in this we've seen some in animals um, but largely the idea is when you're in a fasted state you're up regulating this hormone called FGF 21 and it also turns out that if you feed yourself fructose or pure sugar, um, you know, whether it's glucose, fructose, or the combination sucrose, it signals the liver to produce more FGF21. So while eating sugar will shut down the autophagy benefits in other parts of the body, um, like you get while you're totally fasted, it will upregulate fasting in the liver and signal the metabolism to increase energy expenditure to give you some energy to go find some protein. So it's a very fascinating concept. So I've been giving it a try, I'm about two weeks in or so. I had a blood glucose monitor, continuous blood glucose monitor, which uh, I find extremely useful. Unfortunately, it stopped functioning about seven days in. They're gonna send me another one. Um, that showed me that even after just a few days of consistently consuming sugarcane juice, as I did it largely on sugarcane juice, the impact that my blood sugar was reaching with each dose of sugar gradually declined over the days as I became more adapted to dealing with glucose. Now I have chronically basically, not even consciously avoided carbs to a degree for the last 10 years or so. I did a lot of keto, I did a lot of OMAD, and more recently, the last four or five years, I've been doing what I call local vor diet, omnivorous diet. I eat potatoes, meat, vegetables, fruit. Um, but I have been doing a lot of testing on my body. I tested my microbiome, see some uh, disruptive species in there that I have to clear out. I also recognize that my thyroid is cranked down, which is a result, can be a result of chronic fasting and chronic ketosis. And so because of that, this diet interests me particularly, uh, not to do a sugar diet all day, but just to do like a intermittent sugar fast because it has the potential to upregulate your thyroid activity as well. If you chronically withhold calories, if you chronically minimize um, energy intake, your thyroid is going to start turning your throttle down. The amount of T3 or thyroid hormone you have in your body is basically like at what speed you're operating at, at what speed your metabolism is running at. And there are longevity perspectives that the idea like Amin Ra is to slow your metabolism down as much as possible. However, there are other perspectives that if we elevate our metabolism, we give our body what it needs the energy to turn over cells, to heal genes, to run the immune system, we can actually benefit the health of our body and still have longevity, but also get more out of it. I don't know if you recognize people who do chronic caloric restriction start to really move slower. And I recognize I was getting a lot less done. I was starting to rely on stimulants a lot more. And so I started getting all these tests done and recognized that my thyroid is 
out of whack. And right about that time, I learned about the sugar diet. And so apparently when you flood your liver with glucose, your glycogen fills up, it sends a signal to your thyroid saying, you know, we're in energy abundance. So you can actually, it'll upregulate your burning of fat. You'll start burning more fat, start having more energy in general, and it'll make you just feel like moving. You'll just feel a more natural um, drive to exercise, to act, to move. You'll just be fidgeting more, burning, wasting energy. And so that is the most interesting aspect of this diet for me is what it could do to basically heal a thyroid that I have slowed down because of years of chronic caloric restriction. Um, I found it very challenging to gain muscle, which can also be a result of a uh, dampened thyroid. Um, I've also, as I said, have some microbiome issues that I'm trying to revamp. Yes, the idea of sugar feeding bad bacteria is true. However, whenever you don't pair it with fats and proteins, it doesn't hang out in the gut as long, gets pulled out faster. So in a sense, I'm getting more time to rust my gut throughout the day. I'm pairing my sugar drinks, my sugar cane, with things like cinnamon, clove, cardamom, spices, and I also have these uh, biocidin um, antimicrobial capsules that I'm taking as well. And so when I pair that with sugar, there's also another theory that sugar entering the system causes the bacteria to kind of come out of their biofilm because you can't really hit them behind the biofilm and it can be hard to dissolve and so it makes them more susceptible to antimicrobials. So for me as an individual working on resetting my gut and my thyroid, I'm actually really genuinely interested in this sugar diet. I'm only doing it part of the day, sugar fasting till about two o'clock, eating one big meal and another medium sized meal in the evening still trying to get like 120 grams of protein at least total and not shying away from carbs in the afternoon either but trying to eat well-rounded taking all the micronutrients um, and trying to still hit a relatively high amount of calories which is also a really good way to signal to your thyroid that you're in energy abundance so those are the experiments i'm running right now it does seem that this could be really beneficial for weight loss however you don't want to chronically live like this obviously you will run into a deficiency as i have done to myself in my chronic fasting past so be cautious of that use it and i recommend a more balanced and gradual approach pair it with plenty of protein later in the day you have to be fasted from fat and protein for at least 12 hours before you start introducing carbs in order to get that elevated FGF21 effect. And there's a lot of beneficial like anti-inflammatory, um, you know, boost your energy production, boost your thyroid uh, benefits that come with elevating that FGF21. It's pretty fascinating. I'm still learning a lot about it, but I wanted to give you guys a little bit of insight about what I'm finding really interesting about this new um, kind of bro science discovery. As I said, it hasn't really been revealed or studied in any capacity in, in uh, humans yet. There are a few studies, but not really specifically running like a sugar diet, specifically focusing on being fasted for 12 hours before eating the sugar. Um, but I really do see and feel personally uh, that this could really be a beneficial tool. These are all just tools for the toolbox that we can use at different times to benefit our health and well-being. Um, it is known that cortisol lowers FGF21. Sugar lowers cortisol. So if you're gonna really do the sugar fast with the idea of elevating your FGF21, you wanna keep your caffeine low, which is something that I've been drinking a lot of for years now, basically to balance out all the caloric restriction and then low thyroid so I have actually found it very easy to minimize caffeine now that I'm doing more um, sugarcane juice during the day I am fortunate that I have an endless supply of this I can drink half a gallon a day I can drink three quarters of a gallon a day before two o'clock and is loaded with minerals it's loaded with polyphenols another beneficial compound for your gut 
And so I would recommend if you are doing this sugar diet, load it up. You know, I throw spices in there, cinnamon, I throw glycine, uh, acetylcarnitine, all these things help your body deal with the sugar and help kind of smooth out the spikes. Um, and if you have the ability to score a continuous blood glucose monitor so you can watch what happens and what it does to your uh, blood sugar. Um, also another bonus that I've witnessed is that my sleep noticeably improved from this, which is interesting. Uh, the dreams are a little crazy, so I might be spending more time in REM sleep than I am in deep sleep. I definitely want more of both, but that's an interesting first, um, first effect that I'm seeing in just these first couple weeks. Uh, it's easier for me to train more. I feel a more innate drive to train without it seeming like such a hard job. I just can go running, I can do push-ups, and it doesn't seem so difficult. I think the difficulty aspect for me was my thyroid being throttled way down. I've got numbers on that. I'm gonna test again in another month or so and see how this has affected it. Um, but I definitely already feel like it's easier for me to do more work without stimulants and for me to exercise without the use of stimulants, which is exciting. All right, guys, that is the uh, study. That's the current research project we're in. Uh, if you got any questions, ideas, or resources to share, pass it forward. We got a positive feedback loop here where we're all getting elevated as one singular organism of consciousness coming to know itself. How cool is that? All right, guys, love y'all. I'll see you in the near future. Peace.